Okay, this video is all about the RDO3s and RD56 ARBs and how you can now upgrade them. There are two, maybe three weak points on this particular differential. The first one being the plastic cage here. Now, there's some good news and bad news on the plastic cage. The good news is if it breaks, it tends to be due to uh, age hardening and going brittle and then cracking. But if it does, then, as this one has, then when your gears all fall apart and the cage all breaks and everything, they actually mash together as plastic. So quite often, you can actually rebuild these ARBs without having uh, damaged internal gears. So a new cage will often fix that problem. The other problems they have are much more difficult to fix. The first one, as covered in an earlier video, is the uh, genuine forged ARB N flange which are fitted to the RDO3 10 spline and the RD5624 spline. There are numerous problems with this unit. The first being the bearings can just pull off. What happens is because this is a very soft metal uh, the bearing uh, when the diff is being overloaded actually spins and actually chews the metal so that the the surface area here is reduced and then the bearing spins round. As soon as that happens then you've got a problem uh, with your uh, backlash and your run out and actually getting it nice and true and there's not really a proper fix for this. Um, now on the RD03s this flange is no longer available and on the RD56s I'm not actually sure it's available either. The other thing that happens with these is the end piece is sheared off. Again it's a soft forging you overload the diff and it cracks um, and if you really give these some stick you actually tear the centre out completely. So this is a real Achilles heel uh, for these diffs. Even if you're lucky and you don't actually do that much damage what you will find is that these uh, holes here become elongated um, and they crack um, and, and generally this is because it's a very poor quality forging from probably the 80s but unfortunately it's still a poor cheap forging. So we have, uh, if you've seen the other video, um, fixed that particular problem uh, by producing this, which is the uh, end flange that we make ourselves. This is uh, machined out of a high grade EN steel. It's heat treated, comes with a brand new Timkin bearing, um, significantly stronger because this is billet steel, not a forging. Um, we've sold um, a, a wide number of these now. Um, and this solves that problem. However, the other problem with ARBs of those ilks are the air flange. And on the air flanges, um, where the um, rubber seals are in constant contact, I don't know if you could pick it up on this video, but the little O-ring actually rubs and puts two grooves into this soft metal. Again, this is a, this is a cheap forging, it's machined, and because of the way the ARBs, if a tyre is moving, then your rubber o-rings that are your air seal are also rubbing and because it is a cheap forging they will actually wear a groove. This one um, is, is scrap, problem is now you can't get them. There is also an earlier type, uh, this one has the o-rings um, actually in the air flange and the problem with this is it does the reverse, it wears the air ring out as the seals rub into that which is even softer, I think it's cottage cheese. So uh, one of the ways around it is to fit um, a new uh, end flange. Um, there is a problem and that is they're becoming either obsolete depending on which model you've got, incredibly hard to get, um, I think they're going to go obsolete fairly shortly and they're still made out of the forging um, they're not the they're not the nicest uh, machining. They're not the they're not the highest quality bit of kit. And you just know that uh, your O-rings are going to start grooving this. So we have found a another problem, and that is that the bolts that are used on uh, the uh, air unit that you've just seen are extremely low grade. They're so low grade that if you torque them up to over about 20 foot pounds they're liable to shear and so what ARB have done in their wisdom is put these little clips so when you've done your bolt up you hammer the clip on top of the bolt to actually fix it into position which is a really stupid idea because if that comes off 
has a tendency to fall into between the crown wheel and pinion and mash together and destroy your diff. So there's your ARB replacement. We hunted high and low to actually get this one and we wanted it because we've been quite busy and we've made our own. And this is exactly the same as the other air flange. This is made out of a high grade EN steel. Um, it's machined out of a solid billet. Uh, the machining on it, as you can see, is absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's a quality, quality bit of kit. Um, so if you compare the two, they are completely different. So we will be selling these on our website and offering them to customers that need rebuilds. Um, and in addition, we've worked out that by making the holes slightly smaller, uh, we can actually put a 12.9 grade bolt instead of the silly, cheesy bolt. Um, these will come with a Timkin bearing pressed on here, and they'll also come with um, a new piston pressed in. So this is a proper replacement. In actual fact, and the rest of this video covers it, we're actually beginning to think that this little old ARB over here, be it 10 spline or 24, um, with, with one of those, and one of those is actually going to be a seriously strong diff. Uh, so a new cage and maybe some new thrust washers as we've got over here um, all put back together with two end flanges both made out of EN billets as opposed to forging. You're not going to have problems with the air leaks. You're not going to have problems with the end flange. You're not going to have problems with the bolts stretching coming loose or the little retaining clips falling off and dropping into your crown wheel. And if you put a new cage in there, you're going to get seriously long life out of it because the cages normally, you know, are very old when they break. So the rest of this video is going to be us uh, putting this diff together. Um, and uh, if you're looking at this uh, video before February the 14th, 2016, then you'll be able to see this diff up at Donington 4 before show as we'll be exhibiting. So we'll move on now to putting the diff together and we'll see you later on in the so here's the centre now all built up with the bearing on. Um, small bit of information, a lot of these uh, differentials, the thrust bearings uh, or thrust shims as people call them, do tend to take a terrible amount of abuse. Um, this one here has got quite a ridge in it which you might see um, and this one's even worse actually. Uh, this one's got really heavy ridges. This has done what it was designed to do which is take the wear between the gear and the inside of the casing. These are normally a heat treated item so it's not just some old bit of washer but as you can see we carry substantial stock um, so all our diffs normally end up with new thrusts. Um, similarly if you look at the, the thrusts that go on the back of the planet gears um, the one at the bottom has got some serious wear in it where something has picked up and made a groove you can actually get your fingernail in there and pick it. They also tend to rub over on the outer edge and form like a ridge um, but for the sake of a few quid you can put brand new ones in and it transforms the entire build. So cracking onwards, let's carry on. Okay, so here we have the ARB now fully assembled with our new top plate. Uh, we have our uh, little uh, uh, baby uh, Prince Edward up there and uh, the switch gear. So if we switch it on, that is now locked and if you listen to that, That's the sound of an ARB that isn't leaking, which you won't hear very often. In fact, it hasn't even got all the bolts in yet. Um, so this works really well. So we're now going to lock tight and torque it all up and start building it into a casing. OK, sometime later we've now got the new end flange made out of billet steel on there with the crown wheel, uh, the FTC 5150 bolts and the new Timkin bearing. And on we have the other airing flange complete with the 12.9 grade bolts and again a new Timkin bearing and there's the air journal that the o-rings are going to sit on so we're now going to put this into a case. Now going into the casing they fit in the same position as standard and there's the other one on the other side so we're getting there now this will have a later type RD128 airing and we're also going to get rid of the silly um, ARB assembly on the front for the airline. It will be a simple push-in modern fitting. So a little bit more work to go yet. And here we are, sometime later, diff fully built up with the flange on the one side. Uh, we have our normal build with heavy duty 12.9 
carrier bolts with special locking washers, FTC 5150 12.9 heavy duty carrier bolts, the excess flange going on to the ARB, standard crown wheel, standard ARB centre and then the new excess air flange and uh, an RD128 conversion on the side um, giving a proper air seal and then round the corner here we've got rid of the horrible ARB uh, air fitting and we've got a uh, ARB hose uh, push-in fitment so you get rid of all the olives and springs and nonsense and there we are we actually think that this uh, differential now is actually going to be a very strong unit you've got proper billeted machined ends you've got a, a center tube with held together with proper 12.9 grade bolts um, we can basically rebuild any IRB uh, with these here and with a new cage I think it's going to give very good long okay we put our uh, special tool in that we use for testing at the end there with 24 spline which uh, if we just jiggle it uh, shows that the diff is going round and we will now hit the air system you can actually hear it locking now which is unusual for an ARB that it's that hard a lock but you're now getting a hundred percent of the air and if we unclick it it actually beautifully and smoothly undoes itself so there you go another little product which I think is going to make a lot of people happy because this is probably the diff that has been um, out there as a locking diff longer than any other diff and there's hardly any spare parts available so there you go